All right, we're here again. Hey guys, um, so I was gonna follow up. I gave a, a, a talk about just giving a little bit of myself, being a little bit more vulnerable about myself and explaining, or at least uh, telling a story of how I found myself in functional medicine. But I'm gonna now give a comparison of functional medicine versus conventional medicine, because I know a lot of people don't really know that difference. Um, and I'm sort of gonna give it to you as an example of how um, that might make sense as to why, what's the difference between functional medicine and conventional medicine. It's always nice to have both. There's not one better than another. Um, in, uh, I feel like having both of them in your pocket is actually a good idea. Um, so first of all, when I speak of conventional medicine, I'm thinking of my medical degree and my medical training, which is traditional allopathic medicine. Um, functional medicine, I went through the Institute of Functional Medicine to become a functional medicine certified practitioner um, and have two separate certifications, both in conventional medicine and functional medicine. Functional medicine is a newer um, um, type, a, a newer paradigm and a newer methodology of helping people find health. Um, it's becoming a, a demand for patients and I think it's just because we're dealing with so many chronic illnesses um, that are driven by factors that are so difficult to take care of in the conventional world. Um, there's some disconnect, and I feel like uh, functional medicine really does have some value to add when it comes to trying to when it comes to trying to take care of folks with chronic disease. But let's just talk about just the methodology of how we think. So, as a conventional doc, I was trained um, to figure out what uh, what a patient has. So, for example, you come to me with a certain symptoms, um, and I run it through. The, my training, and I feel like they, somebody comes in with a headache on the right side, palpating, I get nauseous and I don't like the light, and I'm like, well, that sounds like a migraine headache. So I, it, part of my training is mostly trying to figure out what people have um, and naming it, what do you have? Once we figure out what you have, then we can actually go down the list of what kind of treatment options we have available for, you, for patients. And that's been my training in conventional medicine. The flip side to that, or at least the opposite side of that is, is conventional, uh, functional medicine rather, where conventional medicine looks at what you have, functional medicine looks at why do you have what you have. So if you went to me, if you came to me as a, as a patient and you said, I've had this headache and it's right-sided and I've had it for a long time and um, I get nauseous and I get sensitive to light and I, th I think the same way, I think, well, it sounds like a migraine headache, but instead, the more important question after that is why? Why do you have that migraine headache? Because when it comes to migraine headaches, for example, there are so many different causes of migraine headaches, and it depends on where your hormones are, depends on stress levels, depends on uh, food allergies and sensitivities and brain health, and are you sleeping, are you under stress? There's so many factors that are um, contribute to folks having migraines. Um, and as a functional doc, it's, I feel it's, it's beneficial to come with a methodology of asking why. Um, we have a better chance of actually helping people if we ask why. So that's the main couple of differences. Conventional medical doctor, as a conventional medical doctor, I've made diagnoses. As a functional medicine, I ask why, which helps me get closer to a root cause of, of people's problems. The second uh, big difference, and there's a handful of them. I'm just going to couple on, cut on, uh, talk about a few of them. So the second biggest difference is in the conventional world, it's disease managed. Um, you come in with a diagnosis, and now that you have this diagnosis, now we found a plan to help manage that diagnosis. And so it really depends on a lot of disease. There's also a component of conven uh, conventional medicine that was really established historically on acute care. So we do very well with acute care management. Um, whether it involves antibiotics or surgeries and procedures, we do very well with that type of acute care. At least during those times, I felt very rewarded because I felt like I can help people because it was actually something that I can do something about. The problem is when you get into the chronic illnesses, it's hard to, to disease manage. You end up just managing and it, it, you, you feel like you don't get anywhere um, um, to help patients with their issues. And Compare that to functional medicine where we actually look at prevention and optimization. So my goal when patients are coming to me is, why do you have a migraine? What are we gonna do about preventing it? And how do we optimize it so you have zero to no migraines or minimize the migraines and actually get down as, and you can only do that if you can get down to the root cause of why they have a migraine. Um, we actually also focus really on a relationship. Um, so our, our uh, 
approach to patients is more of a long-term because we're trying to optimize and prevent. We feel like it's a journey of health when we establish care with patients. Um, another big difference is um, conventional medicine is really population-based, evidence-based. That's what you're going to hear everywhere. You know, it's not in the evidence. That does evidence doesn't say that. Um, and so, it, there's a big difference in that when it comes to evidence-based. Sometimes you do miss out on a lot of important uh, um, data that that you would have missed um, if you just strictly look at evidence-based medicine. Compare that to functional medicine, we very much look at the evidence-based medicine, but we also in make things more personalized. So instead of saying this treatment works for a handful of patients that we did this study on, um, in the functional world we say, okay, we know that evidence, but who are you? Are you that type of patient? Do we feel like that's going to work for you? So we try to personalize it and get away from it just focusing on purely a population-based uh, information. And last but not least, when you look at the care that you get in the conventional world, um, it's very allopathic, pharma pharmacologic driven, meaning, or procedural driven. Um, and those are usually our treatment options that we have uh, when we have a diagnosis. Uh, typically, uh, it's that also implies that it's covered by your insurance, the so health insurance coverage. Um, comparing that to functional medicine, which is um, more integrative. In addition to having opportunities for some of us, we, con we can, can continue providing some allopathic care and pharmaceutical uh, care, like myself, because I'm a medical doctor. But we also incorporate a lot of integrative care. I've been trained now in botanical uh, medicine as well as herbal medicines. And you know, we, we embrace um, uh, Ayurvedic medicines. We understand the evidence actually that goes with some Ayurvedic medicine, uh, acupuncture, yoga, all these other things that you, I wasn't necessarily trained with in conventional medicine. So that sort of gives a little bit of comparison of what kind of care you're going to get and how it's going to be different. As I mentioned, there's not one better than the other. I feel like having both of those in your pocket is always a good thing. So let's go through a quick review um, of, of the health crisis we're in now and how, we th uh, how me, how I would as a provider look at things differently, having these tools in my pocket, both from an allopathic conventional uh, side as well as a functional side. But let me review quickly just the, the bio, or at least what we know in terms of viral types of infections. As we know, viruses come through through our nasal uh, passage, typically, uh, through those respiratory droplets that we're so trying to avoid, you know, as we're social distancing and wearing masks now. Um, we're trying to avoid this respiratory droplet of a virus getting within our nasal passage. If, it were to ever, if the virus were ever to get into our nasal passage, its first encounter is going to be our structural uh, innate immune support, which includes this mucus layer or mucin layer, and that first layer of cells that sit within our nose or even within our lung. And this is a first level of structure that's going to prevent and protect us from a virus. Um, when we have this intact and we're healthy, the components of the mucus as well as the bacteria that sits in that mucus, the good bacteria, the healthy bacteria, um, and those peptides and proteins are going to actually communicate to our immune system that sits right under that layer that's sitting within our nose or our lungs. And we know in the functional world that if we have good communication, good healthy communication, it's going to give us a pretty robust immune response, turning on what we call a Treg cell that's going to go through and help put up a defense if this virus makes its way in through the cell, through that ACE receptor that I had talked about before. So that's sort of what is actually a good response, a good, healthy, ro robust immune response. And we get that when our immune systems are balanced. When we look at this uh, path um, pathway of how a virus gets into our system, how do we look at it from, or how do we address that in the medical world? So in the functional world, we really do love to talk about innate immune systems, and we like to address these. As a conventional doc, this isn't really in my tool set. And as a conventional doc, I'm looking at your immune system down in here, which we call cellular immunity. This is the level of where we're looking for prescription medicines, all the ones that you're hearing about, that, you know, the malaria drugs, anti-malaria drugs, immunologic types of drugs that we're sort of hoping will help with these, uh, this current situation. Those are prescriptions that are helping at this layer, at this level of involvement. And then we're going to you know, hold out for the vaccine down the road, which is also going to work at this cellular layer of immune dysfunction. 
point about that is it's here that my conventional uh, training or opportunity has to help prevent an illness. And we forget about this part here. So all of this that I've talked about in the past is all functional medicine. We, s we f try and figure out the path pathways and figure out if there are opportunities for us to intervene in those parts of, of the potential of getting an infection. The one thing we absolutely have in common is the fact that we don't want the entry of this virus, which means we want people to be social distancing, we want people to protect themselves, washing their hands uh, frequently, as well as wearing a mask when you're in public. We both agree, the conventional world and functional world agrees that that's an important prevention so that the virus doesn't get into our body or into, into our system. But the functional world, we actually look here as an opportunity of prevention, or not necessarily prevention, it's an opportunity for preparation. Um, because I don't know that with the effectivity of this virus, if we can prevent it as much as just be ready for it. And so that's sort of the difference of, you know, a little bit, you know, how to apply the difference between conventional medicine and functional medicine as it relates to what's important to us right now. And having an opportunity of preparation right in here, because in the functional world, we look at this as an opportunity to try and get in the way and do something about this. I'll talk further down the road about a lot of this type of care that we can do in here to help keep this, this barrier, at least this immune response as, as stoic as we can keep it, as balanced as we can keep it. Because the problem with this, as we know, is that when we have a virus that comes through and we don't have this in good health, if we don't have a mucus layer, if we don't have bacteria, and we don't have this important Treg cells, we have a poor uh, hyperactive immune response that's imbalanced, um, and then we just get too much of an immune response, and that's the problem with this uh, illness, is that it's actually our response to the virus that's problematic that leads us to needing ventilators and, and uh, leading to complex, um, or at least having, this, having the symptoms that and young healthy people decompensate so quickly is because of this hyperreaction to the virus itself. So hope that helps, at least you know, giving you a, um, a comparison of a medical doctor versus an, uh, a functional medicine doctor. Um, I have both of those trainings, so I hope that you know, at least when I'm seeing patients, I put both of those lenses on, the, both those lenses to help filter and guide my treatment planning, um, but also realizing that there's actually some added benefit in the functional paradigm in this particular crisis that we're in. Um, and so I'll continue working on that and giving and sharing those ideas of what we can do to help uh, help in this preparation and keeping this part healthy. Um, please leave me a message if you'd like. If you have any uh, further questions, contact me. Or if you have any concerns about your own immune health and you're interested in working with somebody who can help fix this for you, um, that's, that's what we do in functional medicine. So you can look for a functional doc or touch base with me. Thanks for your time and, uh, and keep learning. That's actually really important to help uh, understand what's going on so that you don't get caught up in fear um, and have a sense of control. Take care of yourselves and uh, we'll talk later. <laughs>